So uh, I did announce, I think two weeks ago, you know, upon installing the Visual Studio. So uh, that is the reason why we have the uh, how to install right here. Okay, so just click this uh, README. And then you only have to install uh, one workload. Okay, so where is that one? Uh, here, during the workload installation, install only .NET desktop development and then ignore the others. Okay, so I, I think Microsoft Azure will show, show up in there. Uh, what else? Uh, some SQL or databases, I guess. Python, even Python. So, yeah. Yes, sir. So, Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Paul. Okay. All right. So, uh, let me just check if you guys are already ready. So, just give me a thumbs up. <clears throat> So wait a second, guys. All right, so sorry for that one. So, uh, can you guys still uh, see my screen? Hello? Hello? Are you guys around? Hello, hello? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sure. Okay. Okay. So, uh, here's now the sample problem number five. So what we can do right here is click this uh, drop down button right here. So we can change the uh, month, okay? So as you guys can see, July, okay, to September is uh, summer. Okay, so this is the picture that I have uh, for this uh, summer right here. For the October, we have here this uh, picture, which is autumn, yeah, I guess, <clears throat> to uh, December. And then January to March is, of course, winter, okay? And then uh, April to July, I guess. Yeah. April to June, okay, is, uh, what is this? A spring, okay? So that is for the four uh, seasons, okay? So there you go. So you have a wonderful uh, changing uh, backgrounds or, uh, yeah, picture, uh, depending on the selected uh, month, okay? So, uh, let me just show to you guys uh, how I uh, uh, did put uh, this uh, picture right here. So let me change this one. So this is spring, right? So let me delete this one and then let's download a new uh, spring picture. So let's say uh, this picture right here. Okay, right click, save image as, and then I'll save it under my desktop. So for now, let me just uh, make this as a comment. Oops. So that I have my own copy, just a backup. Okay, and then I'll name this one to spring. So I'll save it on my desktop. Okay, and then save. So the next thing that we can do here is uh, find the location of this one. So uh, show in oven folder. <clears throat> so this is now the uh, spring picture. So if I open this one, you guys will see. So let me just drag. And we toss it So yeah, there you go. So this is the picture spring. Okay. So uh, the one thing that we can do is to go to properties, so right click and then go to properties and then copy this location right here. Okay, so see slash uh, users slash Ryzen 5 slash uh, desktop. So copy that one. Okay, and then paste it right here. Okay, so after the location, you can now uh, add another slash and then you can now put the uh, 
name of that uh, picture. So the name of that picture is Spring, so just copy and then paste. And then followed by the extension, which is JPG. Okay, copy and then paste. So that JPG. Okay, so as simple as that. And then Control S to save. And then let's try this one again. So the Spring, uh, the picture of Spring should be uh, that updated picture now. There you go. So we now have this uh, picture of your uh, spring right here. Okay. So the same with the other uh, pictures right here. So just a different location. Okay. So I hope uh, we're clear with this one. And uh, one thing that you guys will notice. Okay. So the example uh, given in here. Okay. The code in here. So we have PB1. But in my case, I have picture box one. Because that is the name of my picture box one right here okay so just click this one and then just uh, take a look on the name of that picture box one so for you to be able to change this picture box one into pb1 just uh, find the name okay and then from picture box one change that one to pb1 okay so just click oops we have to stop this one first before we can change the name of this picture box one into pb1 And then, of course, uh, this will be changed into PB1 uh, also. Okay. So, yeah, it will go accordingly uh, with uh, our uh, code right here. So, you don't need to up uh, update this one at the same time. Okay. So, the same with the daytime picker. So, the default name of my daytime picker is, of course, daytime picker one. If you want to change that one, you can change this one into DTP1. Okay. So the name of this one now is DTP1, and then your daytime bigger right here is now, of course, DTP1. Okay. So are we clear with this one? Hello, hello. Are you guys able to follow so far? Yes, sir. Okay, so just let me know if you guys are, you know, you need more example or you need more uh, explanations regarding with this one, with this example, with that topic and so on and so forth. Okay, so that, you know, uh, I can enlighten you, okay, with how uh, things work in programming, okay, line by line. Well, anyway, so yeah, that's it for the uh, sample problem number five. Let's now move on to uh, the next uh uh, kind of statement which is a compound statement so before we only have one single condition and then one statement so in here you can actually have a uh, multiple uh, statements so we still have uh, one condition but however you can uh, execute as many statements as you want okay so you can have five statements five uh, yeah ten statements 15 okay so as long as uh, that's really uh, a required statement on your uh, program. So here's an example. So we have one condition only. If balance uh, minus check is less than zero, then uh, this statement will be executed. And then this statement will also be executed. And then this statement will be also executed. So we have a total of three statements under one condition. Okay, so that is also possible. However, in here, in compound statements, we just have an additional, which is the end if. So if you have multiple conditions, so uh, the condition now must be under this then right here. So it's not beside the then anymore. So it should be uh, on this line, another line, another line, and then followed by the end if. Okay? So for you guys to appreciate this one, let's have, uh, again, uh, another uh, example for that one. But before that, uh, we have another one right here. So what if you uh, need condition in one if else statement okay so we can have as many condition as we want so wow like what we did in uh, sample problem number one and two but in here we can have as many condition as we want also okay but in under you know a one uh, syntax only or in one group only okay so here's the uh, correct syntax for that one so if and then followed by the uh, condition and then your uh, statements right here for the uh, uh, this condition. So if this is not true, then it will proceed to this uh, condition right here. So in other words, uh, if it doesn't able to find that you know uh, this one is true, it will go on the else statement. Okay, 
So we only have two possible results. If the true condition uh, is true, then I mean, if this condition is true, then this will be executed. But if it's false, then this uh, code or false codes right here will be executed. Okay. So another example. Okay. So if this condition is true, then this will be executed. However, if this is false, then this will be executed. Okay, so unlike before, if this is false, nothing will happen. But in here, something now will happen depending on your statement right here. Okay, so if it's true, this three statement will be executed. But if this is false, then this statement right here will be executed. Okay. And anyway, let's have an example, okay? So this sample problem number six. So write a program that allows the user input for the username and password. Display successful login if the username is S21A and password is computer. Otherwise, display the message alert intruder. So again, let me just find this sample problem just to make our uh, discussion real quick. So sample problem number six. Okay, save. All right, so let's go to the uh, interface uh, area first. So in here, this is just a picture box one, which contains a picture. So how did I put the picture right here? So uh, upon clicking this picture box one, you guys will see this uh, play uh, button on the upper right. So just click that one, and then you can uh, click this choose image, and then say uh, from local resource, you can import uh, any picture that you want. So let's say, uh, uh this picture right here okay and then click okay and then this picture now is changed into something like this okay but of course i will not use that one okay since that the picture that we need in here is uh the one that we have uh on this uh, sample problem number six okay but that's how you put a, a picture and then one thing that you guys will uh, notice upon uh having uh or putting that picture so it's in a normal mood okay so to fit the picture, so you have to change the size mode into stretch image. Okay, for that uh, to be able to fit whatever is the uh, size of your uh, picture box one. Okay. So we have uh, three labels right here, user authentication, username, password, and then we have two text boxes. So one for the username and then one for the password. And then we have here the button, which is the one that we have uh, program. Okay. So in here, I declared two variables. So the user and then pass as a string. So of course, uh, we now need a string since uh, we are not uh, doing any computation. So we just need the uh, every character of that one. So we're going to use a string. Okay. So uh, one thing that you guys will also notice right here is we have this function u case, okay? So uh, still have the same concept, you know, whatever is the uh, value of your text box one will be passed on the variable user, whatever is the value of your text box two will be passed on the uh, pass, okay? So in here we're just uh, formatting, okay, uh, the uh, the characters or the value of the text box one into uppercase. So even though uh, I put here a, a lower cases, so it will be converted into upper uh, case. Okay. So uh, later on, I'll show to you guys uh, how is this uh, U case uh, being uh, used or being uh, utilized on this uh, example right here. So we have this uh, condition. So if the user is equal to user and then pass is equal to my password, okay, but in here it's S218. Anyway, so let me just change this one into S218. And then a password is computer. So computer. Okay. Just follow this one for now. Okay. So if this is true, okay, we have the same uh, result, which is uh, still one eight for the user, and then computer for the pass. Then it will display successfully login. But if one of this is not true, let's say uh, this one is false or this one is false, then this will be displayed alert in the weekend. So in other words, this one must be true. This uh, user and password must be true at the same time for us to be able to have this successfully login. 
So let me just show this one to you guys. <clears throat> so username. Okay. So we have here S218. And then, okay, let me just remove that one for now so that you guys can see the password. Because there's already a mask, okay, or a, uh, a layer, okay, for the password. Of course, we cannot uh, see the password. So for the username, it's S218. And then for the password, it's computer, okay? So of course, uh, we did put the correct. Uh, username and then password so we expect to have a successful uh, login so successfully login so if there is one of those which is false so let's say s218 okay then it will give us the other uh, result which is alert intruder okay so the same with the password computers oops um, computers uh Shadow Malet. Okay, let me just make this one bigger. That's 218, and then this one is computers. So of course, it will give us a result of alert intruder. Okay, so those two must be exactly the same for us to be able to have the first uh, result, okay, or the first statement. Okay. So what if I uh, change this one into small letters? So of course, it will still give us a successfully logged in. That's because uh, whatever is our input right here is being converted into upper cases. Okay, so that is the uh, purpose of this U case right here. So it's not case sensitive anymore. Okay, but of course, if, if I did uh, remove those uh, U case, then we now have a case a sensitive uh, a username and password, okay? So let me just show this one to you guys again. So for the username, we have uh, S218. And for the password, we have computer. So successfully log in. But if this one is a small letter, okay, S218, so of course it will give us now a result of alert intruder. So it is now a case sensitive uh text okay so yeah that's the uh, purpose of uk is in there okay so are we clear so far regarding with the sample problem number six <clears throat> hello hello are you guys still around Okay, great. So I hope you guys were able to follow. But anyway, so upon uh, watching this video again, so you will uh, maybe able to uh, understand it more. Okay, just try to watch and watch and watch and watch. Okay, and then try to redo and then try to modify and then try to understand uh, what is this line for? What is this line for? Can I do this? Can I do that? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, just explore. You know, experience is the best teacher. Okay. All right, so that's it for the sample problem number six. So uh, here's the solution. So you can cap it at one and then make it work okay, on your own. And then we have exercises right here. We're in, uh, uh, we will not do this one using the visual study code. This is just a basic concept. Okay. So write an appropriate if statement for each of the following conditions. So if an angle is equal to 90 degrees, show the message the angle is a right angle else show the message the angle is not right angles in here uh, of course we have a variable angle so if the angle is uh, equal to 90 then this will be displayed however if this is not true then this will be displayed instead so message box the angle is not a right angle okay so i hope you guys were able to get the exercise number one Anyway, for the exercise number two, so the same thing, just a different condition. So if the temp is above 100 degrees, display the message above the bo uh, boiling point of water, else display the message below the boiling point of water. So if this is true, then this will be displayed. If this is false, then this will be displayed. Okay. So for the exercise number three, 
if the num is positive, then add the number to post sum. Else, add the number to next sum. So let me just show to you guys the uh, result of this one. Number, exercise number three. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. Uh, if I put the value here, let's see, if it's positive, then it will be displayed in here. Then at the same time, if I click add once more, uh, whatever is the uh, the value of this post sum, and then whatever is the value of the uh, this value right here, the input value, okay, it will be added onto the post sum. So meaning, Wait a second. So if I click five, so it, it is positive, so it will go to the post sum. Okay. And then if I click add once more, okay, so the uh, current value of post sum will be added with the uh, new value of uh, this text box right here. So five plus five is equal to 10. So it's like incrementing by five, okay, after clicking that add. Okay, if I change this 1 into 2, so it's now incrementing by 2. So 1 then plus 2 is 112, and so on and so forth. Okay, 100. So 4 is 144, 148, and so on and so forth. So the same thing with the negative number. So if it's negative 4, then it will be added on the next sum. Okay, so if I click add once more, so negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. Okay, and then it's now decrementing by negative 4. So I can also change the value of this 1 into 3. Okay, and then it's now decrementing by negative 3. Okay. So that's basically uh, it uh, for the uh, exercise number 3. So if the num is positive, then add the number to post sum. Else, add the number to next sum. Okay. And then the code for this one is uh, this simple code right here. So the first thing that I did is I declared a global variable. Okay, so when you say global, it's now outside your uh, functionalities. Okay, so this is your function button one. But, you know, if it's inside, so like, for example, this one, dim num as integer, this one is a local variable. But if it's global, then uh, it's outside your uh, functions uh, right here. So when you say global, of course, you can uh, access that one uh, even though, uh, let's say, uh, we have another button right here. Okay, just for example, okay, so this button right to right here can access this post sum right here. So post sum is equal to, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 3. So we're just putting a default value of 1, 2, 3 to the post sum. So as you can see, it didn't uh, give us an error even though I didn't declare uh, any variable inside of this uh, function right here. That's because I am accessing this uh, global variable right here, okay? So the reason why I did uh, put a global variable so that we can store a value okay, of that one so that if, even though I, I keep on uh, executing this function right here, the value post sum will still uh, retain, okay? So in here, if the number is above uh, 0, of course, uh, it will be displayed in post sum. If it's less than 0, it will be displayed on the next sum. And then for us to have an incrementing value, we have this uh, plus num right here. So what is this num right here? It is coming from uh, this text box one right here. Okay, so whatever is the last value of your post sum, okay, will be added by the uh, inputted value of your text box one. Okay, so the same with the next sum. And then uh, after that, we are now going to display those uh, neg sum and post sum on those text box 2 and 3. So text box 2, text box 3. Okay. So uh, I hope you guys were able to get the concept. So you don't need to memorize anything. You can just learn the concept right now. Okay, that's basically uh, programming. Okay, just uh, as long as you know the concept, correct syntax then uh, you're good to go okay so that's uh, the foundation for you to be able to become a good programmer okay well anyway that's it for the exercise number three so uh, let's move on to the uh, exercise number four so if the slope is less than 0 0.5 then set the variable flag 
to zero else set flag to one so this one is also super simple uh let's open a project x ray number four okay let's see whatever is the changes in there so i have here the uh, this kind of uh, interface so i all you have to do is put the uh, value right here okay in this uh, text box and then we can verify okay case so if it's if it's more than one uh ah, if it's less than 0 0.5 then set the variable flag to zero but if it's 0 0.6 and above then we have to display a flag of one okay so let's try this one so if we have 0 0.4 okay so it uh, we're expecting a value of uh, zero okay and 0 0.5 is now uh, above 0 0.5 and uh, above is now one rather okay but if it's uh, 0 uh, 0.4 and below then it will give us a result of zero okay so yeah just a super uh, simple uh, exercise and then uh, moving on to the exercise number five so the different uh difference between volts one and volts two is less than 0 0.001 set the variable approx to zero else calculate approx as volts one minus volts two divided by two okay so again let me just show this one to you guys right so we have this kind of interface right here so it says here that if volts 1 and volts 2 is less than 0 0.01, or yeah, the difference between uh, volts 1 and volts 2. So if volts 1 minus volts 2 is equal to uh, or less than 0 0.001, then we have to set the variable approx to 0. Okay, so this will be equal to uh, 0. Okay. However, oops. Else, calculate approx. Uh, as volts 1 minus volts 2 divided by 2, okay? So let's have the first condition first. So 1 minus 1 is a 0. So it is now lesser than 0 0.001. So we are expecting an approx of a 0, okay? However, if it's not 0, let's say uh, it's not le less than 0 0.001, let's say 2 minus 1 is 1. So uh, it will now go to uh, else condition right here is one right here so we have this another formula where in volts minus uh volts one minus volts two uh, divided by two so in here if we have two minus one which is one divided by two so it will give us a result of 0 0.5 okay verify so 0 0.5 so four minus one is three divided by two is 1.5 or 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, all you need to do is follow whatever is the you know given condition right here and then just try to make it work. So even though you know some of the answers doesn't make sense, some of the uh, exercises are uh, you know uh, like uh, came from nowhere. Uh, yeah, just just an exercise uh, just to uh enhance more your uh if else uh statement uh familiarization okay so yeah that's it for the uh exercise number five so how did i do that one on the code so on the verify so i declared two variables which is uh, volts one volts two as decimal then again i'm passing the value of text box about the volts one passing the value of text box to volts two and then we have here the first condition so if volts 1 minus volts 2 is less than 0 0.01, then we'll be displaying a 0. However, if it's not true, then it will proceed to this computation right here. Where in volts 1 minus volts 2 divided by 2, then it will, uh, will be displayed on the text box 3.x. Okay, so are we clear so far? Can you guys still follow? Yes, sir. 
Okay, so very good. So I actually expect you know you guys to uh, mind blown or not uh, able to understand uh, most of it. But if you guys can uh, at least understand the concept, okay, and then the syntaxes, then uh, you're doing great, okay. So it's actually quite shocking, especially if it's your first time, uh, you know, facing this kind of uh, uh, setup, especially for the programming. Anyway, so that's it for the exercise number five. We're gonna proceed to the exercise number six. So if the product between temp one and temp two exceeds two point five degrees. Calculate error as temp minus temp, uh, temp one minus temp two, times factor. So let me just open the exercise number six. Okay. So it says here the product between temp one and temp two exceeds two point five. Okay. So for example, uh, two times two, so it's now four now exceeds 2.5 degrees then we have to calculate error as temp 1 minus temp 2 times factor okay so uh so the this one is 2 minus 2 times the factor uh it will give us a factor of zero so let me change this one into three so uh two okay three na lang. three minus two is to give us a positive uh, result so three minus uh two is one times the factor Okay, which is uh oh, ano bang ginawa ko sa factor na natawid? Okay, let me just find the code for this one. Ah, okay. So when you see factor it is the multiplication uh, factored value of your temp one uh, times temp two. Okay. So in here, let's go back with our first uh, condition. Uh, three minus two is uh a 3 times 2 is 6, which is more than 2.5 degrees. So it will now proceed to this uh, error right here, which is temp 1 minus temp 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1, okay, times a factor, which is 3 times 2 is 6. So 1 times 6 is equal to 6, okay? So what about if it's 4? So 4 times 2 is 8, so it's more than 2.5, okay? And then... Uh, so we have we, we're now going to proceed to this condition temp one minus temp two, which is four minus two is two times the factor is one, which is eight. So two times four is eight. So uh eight times two is sixteen. Okay. Uh so there is only one condition and then one statement. So what if it wasn't able to meet the key uh criteria? Let's say it's not uh, more than uh, 2.5. So 1 times 1 is still 1, you know. So it will give us a result of 0. That's because that is the 1 that I did put in here. So I just put here, else text box 3, that text is equal to 0. Okay? Or you could just simply say that uh, instead of 0, no error, since the one that we are computing here is the error. Okay, 1 times 1 is no error, okay? So 2 times 2 is more than 2.5, so it will give us a computation. Okay. So, yeah, another uh, uh, meaningless uh, exercise. However, you know, just simply follow what is uh, being required, and then uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, call this one. Uh, uh, I forgot the key, uh, proper term. You'll be able to uh, satisfy. Yeah, you'll be able to satisfy your customer. So if let's say your customer is asking you to let's say two minus two is equal to ten, so that is what he what he or she wants. That is the one that uh, he wanted you to program. But just give him that kind of result. Okay, so two. Uh, minus 2 is 10 or 2 plus 2 is 10 okay so the same with this exercise is right here so even though we cannot understand what uh, it's really trying to uh, achieve so just simply follow that one and then you'll be able to satisfy your customer okay 
or you'll be able to satisfy this specific problem. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's it for the exercise number five. Uh, since, again, we don't have enough time anymore, we'll just continue the rest on the uh, part three. Okay. So goodbye for now and then see you guys on part three. So you guys may leave now, okay? We'll just meet again uh, later on the part three. And uh, prepare also if ever you have a question later on. So just uh, ask me uh, on the part three, okay? So goodbye.